is up everyone, my name is Al from Games Rip, and today we're going to take a look at another Castlevania game. I know, I know, when I say another, I, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love Castlevania series, any of the Castlevania games. But here's another nice one, this is called Castlevania Chronicles DX, and this was ported obviously by the amazing Ian Michael onto the Sega Dreamcast, that's right. Obviously this game wasn't created by Ian, but he has ported it over to the Sega Dreamcast. So should we take a look? Let's do it. I'm going to start off by saying this was a pretty damn good port, let's say. In fact, it's an amazing port of an actually very, very good game. Castlevania Chronicles DX very much reminds me of Symphony of the Night. I'm going to go ahead and say it. It very much is like Symphony of the Night, but it's also very much a it's a mashup of a load of the different Castlevania games. As you can see, you got the, the the main character from Castlevania One and Two right there on the map. Then you just got a mashup of all the different textures. And if you listen, I actually think the music's pretty damn great. Take take a listen. Now, am I right or am I wrong? That is, uh, it's very much Castlevania music. If it was in the 90s, that's right, and, to, you know, hyped up to a dance remix, I really, really like it. I really, I don't, I don't know, this is a crazy one, this one. Like I said, this is a real mishmash and a, mil, and a real sort of like, uh, it's almost as if it's laughing at itself. But it's awesome at the same time. The action, the gore level is absolutely off the charts with this one. I mean, we've got gore in most of these games, but this is this is a bloody game. So let's talk controls with this one. This one plays, and I'm gonna be honest with you, it plays so damn well. It's so easy to control. And let's face it, most Castlevanias are they're pretty well known for decent, sturdy controls, yet there's no difference here. This game is really, really easy to control. Now, you can use the analog stick or you can use the D-pad. I personally say use the analog stick. It seems to play a little bit... I don't know, it just seems a little bit more real when you're playing it on the Dreamcast when you're using the analog stick. The buttons, you've got a few simple buttons. You've got your shoulder buttons and a couple on the actual... You know, a, B, X, and Y, um, but would this play better with a sort of a fight stick? I think this would be an interesting one to play with the fight stick. Now, yeah, okay, the fight stick is, or the arcade stick, I should say, it's pretty damn expensive for the Dreamcast. If you're trying to find one now, you know, it's not going to be cheap, but it might be worth it. I don't have one at the moment, you know, looking obviously to get one for these kind of games, but I think this would play, you know, play pretty damn well with this and any of the sort of Beats of Rage games. I just, it's one I think it would play pretty damn well with it. Now, graphically, graphically, as you can see, you know, very much in the style of Castlevania. There's no real difference here. The art style is very much, you know, Bloodlines, if not Symphony of the Night sort of quality. Um, so, you know, we're not, when we're talking about graphics, we're not talking about any sort of, original game in the way it looks so in other words Castlevania 1, 2, 3 we're talking the later games you know the PS1 era game for example like Symphony of the Night and yet you know I think nowadays yeah there are ports of the older ones or mods I should say of the older ones and homebrews but I sometimes like to see the newer style ones because you don't seem to see those as often as you know the mods of Castlevania 1 and 2 you just see you've seen a lot of those as you, you might have seen in my, you know, classics Castlevania collection for the Dreamcast. But this one, like I said, it's a mishmash and very much Symphony of the Night. Now you can tell this is a Spanish version. Here's the name of the character. is Simon Belmondo. Or as we know him in the game, Simon Belmont. <laughs> That's right. Um, I mean, the, the weaponry you've got here, you're very much going to be just using the chain or the sword. I believe you can get other... Uh, weapons as well, but these are the ones you're going to use probably quite a lot, as well as your, you know, your special power as well, which you saw earlier on in the game. 
So, yeah, this is overall a very, very good homebrew and a nice little port that Ian's put over to the Sega Dreamcast. Like I said, it plays pretty damn well. No glitching. In fact, not a single glitch at all. Apart from the, the level layout, you can't play the game all the way through um, in one go. You've actually got to stop when you get to a certain amount of levels, reboot the game, and then go back into complete it. But, you know, it's a little thing. When it comes to something like this, let's face it, it's a homebrew. They're not always perfect. Anyway, I've been Al from Games Reup. Like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you all soon.